is The Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. PLP chairman hits back at opposition leaders' claims about the Grand Lucayan and Grand Bahama Airport. Plus, police investigate a triple stabbing that left one man dead and two others in hospital. And a wanted man turning himself into police, and we've got it on camera. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition start now. We're dedicated to fixing it, and while there may be some ups and downs and delays, we promise that we'll keep working on the project until uh, we get it done. Progressive Verbal Party Chairman and Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, firing back tonight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Raven Davis. Thank you so much for tuning in. The opposition leader, Michael Pintard, accusing the Davis administration of failing to keep promises regarding the Grand Lucayne Resort and the island's airport. In this report, Cleopatra Murphy tells us the PLP chairman dismisses those claims. PLB Chairman and Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Honorable Fred Mitchell, is dismissing FNM leader Michael Pintard's criticism after he accused government of making idle promises. After Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis expressed optimism on finalizing a deal for the Grand Lucayan sale within two weeks or so as September 19th OPM press briefing. Pintard says the time has passed with no pronouncements. However, Mitchell insists there's been continued progress on both ends. If you know what the Prime Minister was saying is that he didn't give a definitive time. He just said the matters we're working on and with the best will, we hope that it, it would have gotten done within 14 days or so. So, you know, that, that's, that's the complete answer to that. Uh, these things are sometimes more complicated than you expect. And uh, there's some ups and downs, but the progress, there's progress being made. And I'm sure that in, um, in a relatively short time, you'll hear uh, something more about this. So uh, I think people should stand by. Mitchell hit out at Pintard, who he says sat in cabinet for four and a half years and agreed to the Port Authority dumping the Grand Lucayan on government for a dollar when he says it will take around $250 million to fix. There are complicated issues, like it's on a floodplain. And so considerable excavation has to take place in order to protect flooding again. So that means uh, special design work has to be done. Pintard also criticized that Grand Bahamians are anxiously awaiting the property sale to benefit from opportunities, but are being strung along by the Davis administration. But Mitchell insists help is on the way. This is going to be a problem that the Bahamas government is going to fix for Freeport. We're dedicated to fixing it. And while there may be some ups and downs and delays, we promise that we'll keep working on the project until uh, we get it done. Outside of the Grand Lucayan, he says there are significant developments like Carnival Celebration Key, the Grand Bahama Shipyard and RCL, adding that the PLP has a record of improving the island's economy and with developments on tap for the island, it is anticipated 6 million tourists will visit Grand Bahama in 2027. You're going to need lots of workers, you're going to need lots of investment, Bahamian investment, lots of new houses to be developed. The airport will be well underway. Uh, the cruise ports will be finished. So good things are coming. And the Afro-Caribbean market, that's coming. So be assured that our hands are on the wheel. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Cleopatra Murphy. In other news, police on Grand Bahama are investigating the fatal stabbing of an adult male that occurred at a business establishment on Sunday, October 13th, 2024. In this report, Shalia Rolls speaks with the officer in charge of criminal investigations, providing a detailed account of the incident, parts of which were caught on video. A family is left grieving following a stabbing incident at a popular business establishment on Polaris Drive in the Caravel Beach area on Sunday night. A large fight erupted in the parking lot of said business establishment. Police officers were called on the scene shortly after where they de-escalated the situation, but it was too late as three men were stabbed and later taken to the Rand Memorial Hospital. When arriving at the hospital, two of the stabbing victims were treated for their injuries. The third male was also transported to the hospital 
with multiple stab wounds to his lower body and back. He was attended to by medical personnel, but no vital signs of life were detected. Soon after, he was pronounced dead. While Detective Chief Superintendent Darrell Ware Sr., officer in charge of the Criminal Investigations Department in the Northern Bahamas, says that this investigation is still in the preliminary stages, but they do have a number of people in custody assisting with this investigation. Currently, we have five male suspects in custody who is currently assisting us with this investigation. Chief Superintendent Ware says that police officials are working with the DPP to make charges in this case. In the coming days, to have consultation with the DPP. PP with intention of laying charges uh, before the week is out or by early next week. Now this is a developing story and we will continue to provide updates as the investigation continues. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Shalia Rool. Just one station. ZNS cameras capturing the moment a wanted man turned himself in to police a few weeks after facing significant scrutiny from concerned parents and a wanted poster being issued for procurement and cruelty to children. Kimio McIntosh, principal of Belmont Oak Christian Academy, surrendering to authorities at the Central Police Station. Matthew Martinborough has more details in this report. Several weeks after an All Points Bulletin poster was issued by police for procuration and cruelty to children, Kimio McIntosh turns himself in as he was escorted by his lawyer, Paco Deal, and his mother shortly after 10 Tuesday morning. Last September, Kimio McIntosh and his venture, Belmont Oak Christian Academy, faced significant backlash for operating without proper authorization from key authorities, including the National Accreditation Equivalency Council of the Bahamas and the Grand Bahama Port Authority. One parent told ZNS News she was shocked to find the school had no electricity on the first day, among other concerns. These issues prompted parents to file complaints with the police, leading to a wanted poster being issued for the principal as part of the investigation. If you notice, recently we issued a wanted poster for a young man, and we've used that, that charge, and that is because we wish to, to talk with that young man as it relates to him allegedly procuring a young person under the age of 18 to have sexual intercourse right here in the Bahamas. On Tuesday, October 15th, Kimio McIntosh turned himself into police, accompanied by his attorney, Paco Deal. While details about the ongoing case remain limited, Deal stated that hope is not lost for his client. Mr. McIntosh has been in contact with me for the past few days, making arrangements to bring him into the police and, you know, to answer these allegations and, def and defend himself. So that's about the most I can say as it relates to this matter. As I said, it's an ongoing investigation. McIntosh's mother, Aretha McIntosh, also appearing beside him as he went into custody. Like I told him, I wish him well, and I hope he get through this. And know that God is on his side. No matter what happens, he can be okay. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Matthew Martinborough. More news from the crime beat. Police on Grand Bahama are busy searching for a gray colored Chevrolet Silverado truck. License plate unknown. The vehicle was stolen from Sunset Village Fish Fry on Monday, October 14, 2024. Tonight, police are appealing to members of the public to be on the lookout for this stolen vehicle. Anyone with information related to this matter, please contact Police Emergency at 911-919, the Criminal Investigation Department in Grand Bahama, the Abe Morocco Police Station or Crime Stoppers at 300-8476. After encountering challenges due to the impact of Hurricane Milton, which disrupted fixed services in Bimini, BTC officials say the issue has been resolved and services have since been restored. Once the issue was identified, relevant crews were deployed and we were able to successfully restore services to Bimini. Do know we are currently addressing a, a few pocket in South Bimini that we expect to be fully restored in the next 24 hours. And 
still to come. Coming up, highlights from the National Honors Investitor Ceremony, plus sports and a whole lot more. There are some things that are undeniably Bahamian. A good count salad, Junkanoo, the way we worship, the way we take care of one another, all undeniably Bahamian. And right in the midst of our iconic things, places, and people is Commonwealth Bank. Increasing access, sponsoring dreams, working alongside Bahamians to increase the quality of their lives for more than 60 years. Commonwealth Bank, nothing more than being Bahamian. Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. Down and see what Dolly Madison has in store for you. Renovate and rejuvenate at Dolly Madison. The Grand Bahama Home for the Aged is celebrating its 34th anniversary with a tasty grill out and raffle. Steak, chicken or fish, and grilled vegetables. Get your tickets today. Phone 352-5408 or 441-3081 for more information. The Paint Fair family has made the move to their new location on Bellevue Lane off of Queens Highway. Visit the store and join the selfie competition to win free paint to remake your home. Follow them on Instagram or Facebook for all the details today. Black Palm is a convenience store in Hannah Hill, H. Mile Rock, that also offers import services. Place an order, schedule delivery, and pick up at the store. Open Sunday to Saturday, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Phone 348-1178 for more information. Black Palm. Elevate your customer service with the My Grand Bahama Customer Service Training 2.0 sessions run from October 30th to November 1st at the Susan J. Wallace Center. Register by October 25th at bit.ly slash mygb. Limited seats available, so sign up today. Here at Freeport Decorators, we have hundreds of products for you to choose from. Whether you're in the market for trophies, plaques, rubber stamps, corporate signs, any kind of interior signage, stamps or seals, we're your one-stop shop. We feature glass, acrylic, crystal awards for every occasion. We build all the trophies here on site. Looking for a gift item? We feature pens, key rings, mugs, tumblers, barbecue tools, even bamboo cutting boards. Have something already? Bring it on down. Let us see if we can print that special something on it for you. Need a headstone? Memorialize the memory of your loved one with a beautifully lasered granite marker. Our store hours are Monday to Friday, 9 to 5. We focus on customization. So if you have an idea or a new concept, bring it on down or call us at 352-5557 or even WhatsApp your idea to us at 646-0777 and we will do our best to make your awards and recognition ideas a reality. Your number one team in the north. Only the sun covers the Bahamas better. Welcome back. Nearly 400 Bahamians honored in the nation's capital, including 12 from the Northern Bahamas. A special investiture ceremony taking place at the Bahamar Convention Center. Our Jolanda Thompson Everest has the details. Officially honored and recognized, nearly 400 residents from across the Bahamas taking center stage at the Bahama Convention Center to receive awards of distinction for their significant contributions to the nation's success and resilience. Politicians, pastors, educators, health care providers, and public servants were congratulated by the Governor General, Her Excellency the Most Honorable Mother Cynthia A. Pratt, followed by encouraging remarks from the Prime Minister minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Family and friends provided strong support celebrating this proud moment as their loved ones received their awards. The ceremony featured musical renditions and solo selections met with applause from government officials, corporate leaders and attendees all united in honoring these exceptional individuals. Each one of our honorees tells a story, a story of hard work, of service, and of the determination to uplift others. These are not just individual accolades. They represent the shared spirit of our people. 
The Prime Minister emphasizing that the ceremony reflects what can be achieved as a country when there is a commitment to a common goal. When we are driven by a sense of purpose and when we believe in the possibilities that lie ahead. The Honorable Fred Mitchell, Minister of Foreign Affairs, also delivering remarks expressing gratitude to the advisory committee for their careful selection process in honoring the recipients. The highest honor uh, to a Bahamian is that of national hero, but that category is so specifically defined that there is a limiting factor. The Foreign Affairs Minister says the journey continues and adds that there is still more work to be done. This is not America and this is not the United Kingdom. This is the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Every day we must fight for our identity in small things and in big things at the United Nations and here at home. For the Bahamas tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Jolanda Thompson, Everest. Thanks, Jolanda. In other news, all roads led to McLean's Town Monday as hundreds of tourists and Bahamians gathered to attend an annual cultural event. One officials are hailing as a success and as an economic driver for the community. Cleopatra Murphy was there and has the details in this report. The 52nd annual McLeanstown Town Cracking Festival had it all as festival goers converged on the seaside community over the National Heroes Day holiday on Monday. Member of Parliament for East Grand Bahama and one of the event sponsors, Quasi Thompson, says it is all about having fun and getting money circulated. It is an economic boom for the community and all of the proceeds of what is, is happening here goes back into rebuilding the communities in East Grand Bahama. So it is for a good cause. You're getting good food, good music for a good cause. From the games to the food to the music, Bahamian culture is on full display and officer in the Ministry of Tourism Investment and aviation and Yahana counts the experience it gave visitors and locals alike as a huge success, while a local vendor says sales were booming. It's a good thing for not only the vendors but for our locals to be a part of and to take part to have fun and to see authentically Bohemian culture displayed on stage, you know, from our live entertainment to we have arts and crafts as well as just a, a taste of Kong salad and to see. We normally have Chunk Nu at our festivals as well, and so to see visitors come and experience that, as well as locals, and be immersed in that, it's a beautiful thing. And the, the font is staying here. The font is here, and that's good for the Bahamian people. What's Kong cracking without the competition? Chicago resident Greg Wigaley not only competed but won, scoring a trophy to take home. It was a surprise, uh, but uh, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud of the effort I made. What surprised me the most was how much the cocks sprayed at me when I first opened it. Residents enjoying the entertainment from the police pop band and the overall atmosphere gave the event high praise. It's going wonderful. I'm liking it. It's very fun and when the music just hits me. I'm having the best day ever. Why y'all didn't come? The people who are here watching sit down, watching TV, why y'all didn't come too? I know y'all did fun. After the fun and festivities of this year's festival, attendees say they eagerly await Punk Cracking 2025. For the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition, I'm Cleopatra Murphy. And now it's time to ask GBPC. How does Grand Bahama Power Company prepare for a hurricane? That's a frequently asked question. So GBPC prepares for storm season beginning from the month of January to May, which is pre-storm season. This is the time that we take to review our playbooks and our procedures. These help us to determine what it is we should do and when we should do it. During the month of May post into storm season, we then begin to monitor the weather forecast. This keeps us on our toes. We continue to watch the weather forecast and have frequent Charter Committee monthly meetings. This helps us to stay on task and also assess as conditions change. In the event we do incur a storm, we then conduct a lessons learned. Lessons learned help us to restore more safely and even quickly in the future. to look at stories making news. Jay, tell us what's coming up in sports. I wish it was a holiday today. <laughs> coming up in sports, the Grand Bahama Amateur Softball Playoffs begin tomorrow at the Grand Bahama Sports Complex. All right, sports is up next, but first, here's a look at tonight's weather forecast.
Tonight's weather forecast is brought to you by Royal Star Assurance. Because it's so beautiful. <laughs> Sometimes you want pizza vibe without the whole dang pie. Now there's a new way to get the bold flavors of pizza whenever and wherever you want. You just got to try Pizza Hut's new mountain buffalo chicken, meat lovers, pepperoni lovers, and chicken bacon wrap for just $6.99. With that, Pizza Hut's new mounts are cheesy, crispy, and loaded. Call us at 352-9191 to satisfy your pizza vibe. Crazy. I want to put some shoes on your feet. Hi. I want to put some shoes on your feet. I still want to put shoes on your feet. I want to put some shoes on your feet. And I still want to put shoes on your feet. We still, still want to put, put shoes on, on your feet. feet. Two locations to put shoes on your feet downtown Freeport, and now our newest location in the Carmichael City Shopping Plaza, right behind the Walk Up Wendy's, Carmichael Road West. Journey to a serene oasis. with this tarp. We all remember the blue tarps after the storm. Let's make sure that we are covered with more than a tarp. Don't allow your investment to be at risk. Protect your investment with one of our insurance policies. Nobody, 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 nobody does it better. Have you been waiting for windows? Then wait no more. Connet Bahamas have in stock now PVC sliding windows, casement windows, and impact sliding windows with mirror tinted glass, all in different sizes and styles. Call us at 352-1301 or visit any of our four locations in Freeport, Nassau, Abaco, and Eleuthera for the great products and great prices. Open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturdays. Connet Bahamas, dream, design, deliver. Ever. Calling all beauty connoisseurs of the Bahamas, a.k.a. beauty professionals from the east to the west, north and the south. It's time to shift and pivot. The beauty of business hosted by yours truly, you tell the road, that's me. Bringing to you some of the best minds in the field of business to help you maximize your full potential. All the tea you need in the areas of branding and marketing by Corel Pinder. Digital strategy by Carissa Stubbs. Customer service and communication by Deborah Pack. And that money management that you need to secure that bag. All you need, daily Newton in one place served on a silver platter. So head on over to Eventbrite and plug in ship and pivot to secure your seat or call 439-3044 for more information on how you can ship and pivot. Good evening, ladies and gents. I'm Jay Philippe, and welcome to Sports in High School Volleyball. LIS won the Senior Girls Tip-Off Classic, while St. George's won the boys' title. The preseason jamboree was named after Ivan Butler, who served as a high school coach on Grand Bahama and most recently, District Superintendent of Education. Butler shared on why it was important to have the preseason tournament. We wanted um, our coaches to 
improve their level of coaching. We wanted to see improvement in the level of play from our, their players. And that's why it's been very, very competitive. As a result of partnering with the Grand Bahama Volleyball Association, they have played an intricate role in developing our young athletes. Most of the kids that played last year were pretty much practicing volleyball all summer or going to volleyball clinics throughout the year. And so this year we are very, very pleased with the competitiveness of the student athletes. And we just, we just want parents now to come out and support their children. We want the schools to come out and support their students and make it just a wonderful experience. Sticking with volleyball, this time from Abaco with high school standings after three weeks of regular season play. In junior girls player Gappy sits on top with a 4 0 record, followed by Patrick J. Bethel with a 2 and 2 record. In junior boys action, the Eagles again has a perfect 4 0 record, while Patrick J. Bethel has a 2 and 2 record. In senior girls, Agape again leading with a 4 0 win loss record, Forest Heights right behind with a 2 and 2 record. And in senior boys action, Agape remains undefeated with a perfect 4 0 record. Switching gears now in sports, softball players begin on Wednesday at the Sports Complex Softball Park. Pat uniform will take on Keys Bahamas at 6 p.m. in ladies' play. At 7 p.m., Ira boys will go up against Pat uniform Reds in all men's play. In co ed action, Cooper's Destroyers will face Chad Golden Knights at 8 p.m. And the feature game will be between CLA hitters and Steve Fantasy in all men's. And finally, in sports, John Quell Jones and the New York Liberty have even the WNBA finals at one game apiece with an 80 66 win over Minnesota Lynx in game two. John Quell Jones finished the game with 14 points and nine rebounds on six of 13 from the field. And that's your quick check on sports. Your Facebook friend of the day is next. Be blessed. All need to save. Save time, gas, and money. Shopping at Save More can help you do just that. Make us your first stop for all your prescription needs and medical supplies. Get all your health and beauty items at the same time. And don't miss our huge choice of snacks to satisfy your cravings. And the largest vitamin selection and over-the-counter relief products. Need diapers and other baby care items? First stop. The new section for makeovers, cosmetics, and beautiful jewelry will make you sparkle for that next special event. Save More Drugs, your more store. Guess what? Budget Pest Control has something important to show you. Cop determines former salmis, the super termite. What makes them super? Their ferocious appetite can attack your home from below and above. They even attack forestry. But don't worry. Budget Pest Control has extensively studied this species on Grand Bahama. You can even check out our scientific paper. So you can count on us to protect your investment. Call Budget Pest Control, the termite specialist. Hi, my name is Janelle Mizek, the communication specialist here at the Grand Bahama Power Company, coming to you with an energy efficiency tip on lighting from GBPC Smart Home. Did you know that incandescent light bulbs emit light as a result of being heated? They consume a lot of energy and use about 90% of it to produce heat. An efficient replacement is an LED light bulb that can save you about 80% and last about 25 times longer. Additionally, incandescent light bulbs can increase the heat in your home and contribute to you having a higher cooling bill. To learn more about how the appliances in your home affect your power bill, visit us at the Smart Home in the Region Center or follow us on Facebook. Jade Champagne and the Rhythm presents 102.7 The Rhythm turns three, and it's a big performance with Taurus Riley live. Oh, Taurus Riley live, 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 live. Oh, yeah, the hit maker, the reggae icon, Taurus Riley live. Saturday, December 14th. The news is brought to you by the new BTC. Fiber is here. Faster, stronger, more reliable. Together, we are unstoppable. Switch today. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, the government signs off on a significant capital investment through a prestigious hotel brand. Hundreds of millions of dollars and hundreds of jobs locked in now that a deal's sealed. 
Also, is your workplace AI ready? Hear about the benefits of bridging the gap as one body looks to innovation and modernization to drive efficiency. And veteran journalists, police officers, teachers, and decorated athletes among the country's latest group of national heroes. The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report, starts now. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the broadcast. Immediate relief, the very two words Bahamas Power and Light consumers have been longing to hear, and a promise the Davis administration made today as they power up two new dual fuel engines to bring about greater energy efficiency. Our Devante Hanna takes the story from here. Tonight, a new era in energy promising lower electricity bills. We are addressing the immediate need for reliable power, but this is just the beginning. As the Davis administration cut the ribbons on two new dual fuel turbine engines purchased through a public-private partnership with Bahamas Power and Light Company and Bahamas Utilities Holdings Limited. These engines, designed to run on both diesel and liquefied natural gas, are not just a quick fix. They are a forward-looking solution that will deliver immediate relief and set the foundation for a more sustainable energy future. Now at present, New Providence receives about 256 megawatts from this property and its power generation. But with the addition of these two new generators, they'll receive an additional 65 megawatts. The engines allow for dual fuel technology, which will enhance operational flexibility. However, by June 2025, the engines will run fully on LNG. That's Energy Minister the Honorable Jobeth Colby Davis, who claimed that two new engines will provide immediate relief for consumers. This, as the Prime Minister revealed, government is now in its final stages of negotiations for going solar. This is but the, the 62 megs that's now being commissioned today. It's a part of 177 megs that we are going to see happen very soon. In the next month, we should be seeing those contracts being concluded and work beginning on ensuring that we have at least solar to the mix. Teams have reportedly been working on the installation for the past few months, and today, both engines will turn on for the first time. For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Devonte Hanna. And the positive vibe spills over in spillover, rather, in the tourism industry, where global excellence and local expertise team up to create another multi-million dollar project. If all goes as planned, the region's largest Four Seasons resort will soon call the Bahamas home. The government sealing the deal with officials of the globally recognized resort brand this morning as developers propel this particular project as the new standard in luxury. Aldavis Munnings has the story. This project is not only a vote of confidence, but a commitment to our nation's future. For Prime Minister the Honorable Philip Davis, cementing this $275 million project underscores global trust for the Bahamas as a premier destination for luxury tourism and business. The new luxury 75-unit condo hotel will be housed on Paradise Island under the management of the prestigious Four Seasons brand, complementing the high-end Ocean Club property. The Davis administration giving its nod to the 448 Bahamians being employed just in the construction phase and more than 200 permanent jobs created once completed. These are not just numbers. These are families, individuals, and communities who will see their lives transformed by the opportunities generated by this investment. But the benefits extend beyond direct employment. The economic impact of this project will ripple throughout the economy, with local suppliers expect to see an infusion of at least $172 million in spending during the construction phase. Developers from Two Roads Development and Access Industries will spearhead the project, which is scheduled for groundbreaking by the end of the year. It will have an immediate economic impact of over $300 million, and over the next 20 years will have an economic impact of over three quarters of a billion dollars. Visitors to the Four Seasons will not only enjoy the natural beauty of our islands, but also experience the best in Bahamian hospitality, showcasing the warmth and professionalism which we are known worldwide. 
For the Bahamas Tonight, I'm Elsa Vies Munnings. Meantime, while some oppose the advancement of artificial intelligence, others not only welcome it, but are actively advocating for its expansion. Among those behind that push, the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality. Our Danielle Dean tells us more. So we are glad to have you all joining us today under the theme of Achieving Industry, Innovation and Infrastructure Through Artificial Intelligence. If you're in fishing, technology, or even the healthcare industry, you should consider increasing the presence of artificial intelligence. And the reasoning is quite simple, for optimal results. At least that's the message the Bahamas Bureau of Standards and Quality is pitching on this World Standards Day. But what about the overriding concern of AI adversely impacting the local employment rate, threatening the necessity of some jobs? Here's Duran Humes, CEO of Bahamian Software Consulting Firm, with a response. When asked, Duran Humes, CEO of Bahamian Software Consulting Firm, Plato Alpha, responded like this. You don't necessarily have to be scared because a lot of jobs will be taken over by artificial intelligence, but maybe not in your lifetime. So it may be 20, 30, 40, 50 years before artificial intelligence takes your jobs but it will ultimately. Humes even referenced the recent Longshoremen's port strike in the U.S., stating that for this reason, the strike only made things worse for those involved. All that he essentially did was accelerated the timeline of the port owners to say, hey, we're going to automate you guys out of a job, right? If they didn't strike, they may have bought themselves maybe another five, ten years. Let's Onassis Nottage, co-founder and managing director of Results Lab, an AI and so data consulting firm, season. addressed AI from a legal perspective, cautioning that there are stipulations in place to promote trustworthy artificial intelligence. I think it was about a year ago the EU released the Artificial Intelligence Act that pretty much categorized AI based off of levels of, based off of, levels of risk. Based on one of the transparency obligations implemented by the European Union, providers of AI systems, including general purpose AI systems generating synthetic audio, image, video or text content, shall ensure that the outputs of the AI system are marked in a machine readable format or detectable as artificially generated or manipulated. No. But Humes added, though, that AI's growing popularity does not mean workers should just sit by, but use the opportunity to reskill, find a new industry, or learn to use AI for their benefit. Reporting for the Bahamas tonight, I'm Danielle Dean. Well, contrary to popular belief that the Lyndon Pinley International Airport has outgrown its current facilities, Aviation Director Dr. Kenneth Romer insists that's not true. He was talking to a Rotary meeting this afternoon when the issue was once again brought up. However, Dr. Romer says what is needed at the nation's main gateway is more flexible scheduling and better management of high traffic periods. A lot of our uh concerns as it relates to the perception of LPIA are growing its existing facilities has to do with how we manage the peak arrival times and the departure times of our airlines. So it takes an innovation. It takes us down to attract airlines arriving aside of the peak time. How do we spread out the arrivals and departure times working of course in tandem with our hotel properties, with our airlines to ensure the we of this bottleneck approach between the peak arrival time, which is good again for business and for commerce. And speaking of aviation, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Aviation, the Honorable Chester Cooper, will next week take the lead in negotiating and signing air services agreements with 20 countries to enhance connectivity and boost tourism. All in all, the agreements are expected to lead to increased travel, promote economic growth, and attract added international visitors. This, of course, auguring well for the Bahamas as it looks to solidify its status as a leading travel travel destination. Now, in addition to the negotiations, there will also be discussions on best practices in aviation, sustainability, and the future of air travel. The venue, the 16th IKO Air Services Negotiation, or ICANN 2024, hosted by Malaysia's Ministry of Transport, October 21st through the 25th. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, the National Report. There's more news in a moment. In the chaos of our daily lives, it's easy to be caught up 
in the rush. But when you're behind the wheel, remember, rushing can lead to disaster. Don't rush. Take your time. Remember, your life and others depends on it. Slow down. Stay alert and arrive alive. Because in the race of life, it's not about how fast you get there, but how safely. This message is brought to you by Commonwealth Bank, leader in personal banking services. With our KFC Bucket Meals, it's larger, large size. Get the KFC Family Bucket featuring eight pieces of juicy chicken, family fries, and four biscuits that feeds four. A KFC Deluxe Bucket with ten pieces of delicious chicken, two larger size, and four biscuits that feeds four to six. Or a KFC Party Bucket with 15 pieces of our chicken, three larger sides, and six biscuits that feed six. And we'll handle additions, plates, and utensils included, so you can lick your fingers in peace. KFC knows value, and it's finger licking good. Whether you're crossing borders or navigating busy airports, with BTC's reliable data roaming, you're always in touch. In a fast-paced world, staying connected is key. Don't miss important moments. Stay connected effortlessly with BTC, wherever your journey takes you. Legacy of Leadership. Join the International Third World Leadership Association for Legacy Weekend, November 8th to the 9th. November 8th, Legacy Leadership Lecture, honoring global leader. November 9th, Legacy Walk to Remember. Join us for the Legacy Reunion Concert. Hey guys, it's Yolanda Adams. It's about to be a celebration, November 8th through the 10th at the Miles E. Monroe Diplomat Center. I can't wait to see you. Come on. Visit ITWLA.com for details. Don't miss Legacy Weekend. People are going crazy for Popeyes around the world. Some have camped out for hours just to try our delicious chicken. This guy stocked up on 300 crunchy, juicy chicken sandwiches, just in case. And these lovebirds celebrated their wedding with the Popeyes cake, for real. We get it, y'all chicken lovers. Cause we're just as crazy to marinate our chicken for 12 hours and make every piece by hand. That crazy love, we love. love that chicken from Popeyes. The news is brought to you by Bahamas Striping Group of Companies. You're looking at an overcast yet serene view of Nassau Harbor. Welcome back. The evening session of this year's National Honors Investiture and Conferment Ceremony saw nearly 200 Bahamians receive honors. A proud moment for the honorees and their families. And as Corval Pyfram tells us, it is hoped these honors inspire future generations of Bahamians. In honoring this latest group of Bahamians being bestowed national honors, Foreign Affairs Minister Fred Mitchell, who also chairs the National Advisory Council on National Honors, reflected on the journey that brought us here. From the abolition of slavery, majority rule, uplifting our African heritage and national independence. Fortunately, again, there were men and women who saw the vision and the need to pass on their examples to the next generation. Seven of them have now been declared national heroes of the Commonwealth of the Bahamas, a country that is only 51 years old today. Men and women, some no longer with us, representing a wide range of areas, receive the nation's highest honors. Prime Minister Philip Davis says these men and women are owed a huge debt. Today's honorees have elevated virtually every area of our society, education, health care, the arts, public service, and beyond. They have all played vital roles in uplifting our nation, and for that, you have our everlasting gratitude. Veteran photojournalist Eric Smith, Assistant Commissioner of Police Warren Johnson, and Olympian Devin Charlton were among this year's honorees. What all I did was for my country, and um, I will continue to do it for my country, no matter what. When you start off in life, you don't really know where your journey will take you. But to serve one's country, and this man has been the single greatest honor for me. It feels amazing to be recognized against um, some of the greatest Bahamians and just to receive this honor. Um, it, feels, it feels good um, just to be recognized for um, accomplishments. Um, it's a good feeling. 
On this National Heroes Day 2024, roughly 400 Bahamians had honors bestowed upon them. Expect that figure to remain in that ballpark at least for the next few years or so, because as Minister Mitchell puts it, when it comes to honoring Bahamians who've made significant contributions to national development in this country, well, we still have a lot of catching up to do. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Corvell Pyfram. Well, of course, we extend congratulations to all the honorees. On a more somber note, any idea how many attempts there were to commit suicide last year? Well, we've been told 50 plus. In fact, a consultant psychiatrist, Dr. John Dillette, recalls treating clients with suicidal thoughts, calling it a tragedy. Whenever someone feels so despondent, they wish to end their own lives. I've had clients, unfortunately, who have committed suicide. So sometimes it's as a result of trauma. There are many persons who have very, very difficult childhoods or who have undergone very traumatic circumstances, rape, molestation, life-changing circumstances like divorce or financial ruin. Uh, and they feel hopeless, they feel helpless, they feel like their life will never change. To let list steps people can take to sharpen their mental health. I've always found that persons who read and read broadly tend to be a little bit happier and more able to connect with others on different levels. Uh, games are good, you know, but games that help to test your intellect and your knowledge base and expand your horizons are things that also can give lots of joy and fulfillment as well. But interaction with others in small groups, being able to converse about politics, religion, you know, whatever the issues are of the day, in a space where you're not being judged, you're not going to be made fun of, you can express yourself, but you can learn. Well, the popular ZNS radio talk show, Men's Talk, hosted by Sean Innes, taking a proactive approach and seeking answers on the life of men. The show aired live from Executive Grooming Barbershop on Shirley Street, where some of today's male mentors used the opportunity to shed positive insight on the role men play in our society. Proprietor Anton Minnis acknowledged that men are usually comfortable expressing themselves in the barbershop. We find today that a lot of men are not equipped emotionally, not equipped academically to actually deal with something of that nature. You know, we tend to refer things like that instead of understanding that this young man just asking for a dad. He's asking for somebody that can understand him and, and, and understand that a hug does not carry an eros connotation to it. That you have to have that septuagenarian love just for the young man alone. And here's more from Dr. Marvin Smith. Having consistent fathers and grandfathers and, and uncles who bring a positive influence right into their lives create sometimes this cascade of pitfalls and obstacles and hurdles and for some men they just go okay well i ain't dealing with that no more i just gonna do what i gotta do and for other men it breaks them and you end up with the issues of mental uh mental health challenges depression and, and even suicide stay with us on the beat is after the break this portion of the news is brought to you by folk call smart pass the smart way to pay at the pump. ago, the Bahamas Striping Group of Companies was birthed out of a passion to change the way we travel. From only a $5,000 grant, the tenacity and work ethic has propelled BSGC to one of the leading road management companies in the Caribbean. We pride ourselves on going the extra mile where others won't, through the use of our state-of-the-art equipment and our certified team. Although the success is commendable, the road has been long. Yet, 
The mission continues in striving to be a world-class organization ran by Bahamians for Bahamians. With the help of our experienced and hardworking team, we at the Bahamas Striping Group of Companies are committed to making a difference one road at a time. Introducing the Focal Smart Pass app that helps you to fuel up faster. Here's how it works. Download the app on the App Store or get it on Google Play and create your profile with payment details. Visit your nearest Shell station, open the app, scan the pump's QR code, select your payment amount and begin fueling. Say goodbye to cash and cards because the Focal Smart Pass offers secure and convenient payment options right at your fingertips. Download Focal Smart Pass now and fuel up faster today. On the business beat tonight, we look at the rights of consumer and the agency task with ensuring those rights are protected. Here's Corville Pyfro. Senator Randy Rule is coming up on the two-month mark in his role as the executive chairman of the Consumer Protection Commission. And he and his team are on a mission. The work of the commission is to deal with uh, goods and services to make sure that we protect consumers as it relates to services. The agency has seen an uptick, Rule says, in the number of complaints it receives from consumers. Already more than 300 for the year. Here are the services ranked by number of complaints according to Rule. In our research, we realized that courier services was ranked number one, followed by construction services, and then uh, there was hardware stores and, again, utility companies. He wants consumers to know not only that they have rights, but that there is a process for them to seek recourse. We believe that once they uh, have knowledge of what uh, their rights are, and of course an avenue in which they can complain, then we will see an increase in the numbers of complaints. The Commission is planning an education campaign and widespread media blitz to help raise the public's awareness about consumer advocacy. Senator Rule believes through the Commission's work, we'll begin to see a paradigm shift in the way business is done. So you're going to see a lot of campaigning, a lot of uh, public relations stuff from our standpoint. So the consumers know it, a lot of training and education. And so we have a team that's going to go on the streets, that's going to go on social media and talk about what is your rights as a consumer. Senator Rule stresses that he, neither his team here at the Consumer Protection Commission, are out to punish anybody. They just want to ensure that consumers and businesses live up to their end of the bargain in the delivery, purchase and sales of goods and services. On the business beat, I'm Corval Pye from. Well, it's about that time that we switch on over to the lighter side of our newscast. And for that, we turn to LaDawn and Marcellus, who are standing by to give us a sneak peek of Access Now. Guys? Well, Chris, well, let me tell you, the Red Cross Ball is returning to Grand Bahama after, get this, 17 years. Did you know that, Marcellus? 17 I, I had long no years. Idea. 17 years, huh? Okay. It's not a long well, time. At least we know there won't be a year 18. Oh, so. right. <laughs> You're on the right track. Because... <laughs> <laughs> well, stay with us. Our feature story is up next. Is the Little Caesars Stuff Crust Pizza. Get more pizza for less money. Only $12. It's a whole new level of pizza with cheese stuffed crust so spectacular that there's, <gasps> there's nothing left. Pizza, pizza. A delicious pepperoni pizza with the crust stuffed with lots of cheese and brushed with butter and garlic flavor and sprinkled with Parmesan cheese. Hot and ready Thursday to Saturday between 4 and 8 for only $12. Simply irresistible. And only at Little Caesars. Pizza, pizza. We here at Candid Security offer a varied range of security services, including guard service. We do armored service. We do pre-employment investigation, background checks, also by people for employment. A live business hosted PBX is extremely important to our operation. I don't have to be in my office. I can easily get connected with our clients, my vendors, my NASA office, and with our employees in the field anytime, anywhere.
JBI Lemon and Lime. One of the best products you can find anywhere. This is one of my favorites, and I have lots of favorites at JBI. This is very rich. Um, I put this in everything, whether I'm baking, whether I'm doing peas and rice, coconut and rice, or you're doing some curry and you want your cream to be in your curry, you could do everything with that. Oh, I love this with my nice lime. It, it goes with my uh, tuna, tuna salad. When I put that lime and that great food, spicy food I love, so try JBI Lemon and Lime. <laughs> try JBI. Happy anniversary to JBI. JBI. To the world. Thank you, St. James Anglican Church hosting its sizzling annual King of the Grill competition on National Heroes Day in honor of Father Anthony Roberts. As Wes Calix Forbes tells us, the church grounds were transformed into a culinary battlefield. With a smoky barbecue aroma filling the air, the excitement was visible as participants fired up their grills, each hoping to claim the covenant title. We take part in the grill out, and it's a, it's a positive thing, it's a fun thing, and we always take home a prize. Last year we got second overall in best rib, this year we intend to sweep. No, uh, no disrespect to my uh, St. James brothers here, we always be here to face place going off, right? <laughs> so be more or less like friendly. Yeah, no matter who win. <laughs> but this year, you can either stay home or going down to Virginia Street. I just pop in to, to clarify some things. You know, I, I hear, heard a hey, lot buddy. of second and third places being floating around there. So I just had to stop in as, as the reigning champion, the Parish Church of St. Gregory the Great, to let you know that we are back again this year. This year, we are coming to repeat, <laughs> this time, by a larger margin than before. Right. Praise the Lord. The diverse food offering showcased the creativity and talent of the competitors who brought their A-game to the grill. But the competition and the aim behind it was just as impactful. There came from Father Anthony Roberts, who was the assistant pre-sale. He always wanted a comp to, he always wanted a competition between the various men of the Anglican Church churches. He passed away without it ever being. So the men of St. James took it on and to make it a reality. And this is our 19th year. And when it came to who they thought would have won and who actually won, I'm hoping the little church of St. James in Adelaide could take home the prize um, because the people of Adelaide, they're just so beautiful. We love that people come out, support. It's like a block party out here. It's well, you know, I'm always pulling for St. James. And, and, you know, when I go to the other churches and I ask them if they're going to put a team in this year, I always tell them, I say, look here, St. James needs someone to beat up on. Congratulations to St. Christopher's. For the Bahamas tonight, I'm Wes Alex Forbes. Oh, great story there, Wes. That, 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 that does it, though, for the National Report, but stay close. The Bahamas tonight continues with Access Now. The Anchor Awards, an award show aimed at honoring the brave fishers of the Bahamas, is reeling in soon. And we at the Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources want to ensure that you're there to join in on the fun. So you can go to the ministry's page, the Bahamas Ministry of Agriculture and Marine Resources. You can type that in. At the top of the page, you will see a active link, and that is Ticket Flare backslash Anchor Award.